Hello everyone, welcome along to the SUTV show as we look ahead to Sheffield United's match with Everton this weekend. After three close encounters, the Blades are hoping to get their first points on the board this weekend. One man who could well be central to that joins me today, it's Ollie McBurney. How are you doing Ollie, you okay? I'm all right, how are you? A few games in, what's your reflection on what you've seen from this team so far? Yeah, I think it's been uh, not ideal to start, you know, the situation that we've been in, the boys. Um, there's obviously been a few outgoings, a bit uh, kind of a sticky time for us and a few boys been injured. But I think, you know, you can see the progression from each performance. Um, the way that the, the boys have performed has got better in each game. You know, that's going to come naturally with the more the boys play together, the, new, the more the new boys gel in with each other. And we get boys back from injury as well. So it's all trending in the right direction. And you yourself are coming back from injury. How do you feel at the moment? Yeah, I feel good, mate. I have a two, two run outs now, obviously. Not ideal another pre-season, um, not getting minutes under my belt, but you know I felt good at the weekend when I came on and last night was just about getting a 45 minutes under my belt and, and ready to go this weekend, so yeah, I feel good, mate. In terms of yourself, you'll have no doubt looked at what you personally did in the Premier League last time. Bearing that in mind, what are you looking to get out of the Premier League journey this time? What does Ollie McBurney want? I want to stay in the Premier League, first of all. I think that's, the main, that's our main goal. You know, we want to be establish ourselves as a Premier League club, a Premier League team and by doing that the first step is by staying in the Premier League this year. I think on a personal level, you know, I think the first season in particular I know I can I can score goals at this level and I can help the team and I think that's what that's what I want to do this year. So um yeah, from that from that point of view that's what I want to do. Do you expect to I don't know whether to come easier is is the right phrase, but because you've been there before, you know what this division is all about. In that sense is it easier to handle? I think that, and I think, me personally, I think I'm a better player now. I think I'm a more well-rounded player. I think I'm a more mature player, um, a mature person as well. And I feel that that's all going to help. You know, like you said, there's a few of us that have been there before. We know what the league's about. Um, we know what it takes to get results in this in this division and, and how, how we have to perform. And, you know, the weekend's a great great example of that. You know, I think, like the gaffer said, I think you said we was 99% perfect in the game, but you know we know maybe last year we could have been 99% perfect and got a win. This year, you know them them one percent is going to kill us and we're going to get hurt. So we need to kind of cut out them and you know it's as much concentration and mental strength as it is in anything else in this division. And you know I think we we show that we can mix it with with the best. We just need to add them little finishing touches. As you mentioned, it has been a, a transitional summer. What role do you have to play in the dressing room as one of the old guard, if I can put it that way, um, in terms of bringing everybody into the circle, as it were? Definitely, yeah, you know, I think it's probably the first year that I've got to accept I am one of the older boys. <laughs> it's still a hard one for me to take. I, I prefer experience yeah. to old. But yeah, no, it's, it's not just me, but the boys that have been here a long time. You know, we have to kind of let the, the new boys know about the culture and the way that the dressing room is and you know, that to, to buy into the why we've been so successful over the, the last few years and, and what we're about as a club. You know, I think the gaffers and the staff are uh, a key in terms of when they're bringing players in and looking at that side of players, not just the way that they play, but their personalities and their mentalities has to be similar to our dressing room. Um, and it's down to us to kind of parole the dressing room and make sure that the boys all buy into what we're about. Um, it's, sometimes it's quite, it can be more in a humorous and a, and a funny side um, that we can you know, get the boys involved with each other. Um, but there's times that we have to kind of let, let, let lead by example and show, and show the, the levels and where, where we want to be at and what we want to be about. Patience, you know, is a word that's used a lot in football. There's not always a lot of it, but does it need it here? I think so, yeah. I think like you say, you know, we've, we've, had a whole pre-season of probably with certain players and then you know when the season starts it's a completely kind of new team so it's it's naturally it's going to take a little bit of time you know we're working on it on the training pitch as much as we can as hard as we can and you know the more players we get back from injury and more players who we know already know the system and things like that it's, it's going to help um, and then it's just a matter of time of the, the, the new boys clicking and fitting in and um, I'm sure it will do and hopefully this weekend it can click a little bit more than it has done and, and so on and so forth. Will's been playing with, with Benny for a few games already, but speaking of Benny, he, he's, he's rapid. Are you looking forward to potentially forging a partnership with him? How do you see that working, that partnership? You know, Trish, I've always played well with players that have, have been quick, you know, maybe had a bit extra what I lack um, sometimes, but uh, some might say. 
Well, yeah, no, but he's been sharp. He's been really quick. You know, it's obviously a, a completely new league and new language and everything for him. So yeah. it'll take a bit of adjusting. I think he's done really well. I think a lot of it is the way we play is probably a lot different to a lot of the teams that other boys might have played for in the past, especially with his, the same way Benny. So once he kind of learns the, the tactical side of it, you know, the gaffer's really good and Jack's really good at doing meetings with him and with all the new boys and getting the way that we want to play. You know, I think once you know the tactical shape in this team and how the gaffer wants you to play, you can, you can go and then express yourself from, yeah. from that, which which is, which is will be good for Benny. Um, yeah, he's, he's so quick and and sharp and bright and you know it's it's about finding them new new partnerships this year like like what I had with Illiman last year and yeah try to find that again this year with, with a new strike partner and obviously that was a that was a massive loss losing Illy but you brought Gustavo Harmer in who will kind of fill that role he will say he's a completely different player but you know where I'm coming from he's he's got the ability to thread the passes through and link the play mm-hmm. what have you made of him so far yeah he's he's been real top class he's, he's far from the first day in training, we did kind of a, a, a crossing and finishing drill, and every one of his crosses was on point. Every one of his finishes was on point. It was the first time that I'd really, like, I was like, took a step back and like, yeah, it was really yeah. Good, higher. You could see it in the Forest game. I thought yeah, yeah, he, he looked at home in the Premier League, didn't he? Yeah, he didn't look out of place at all. He looked like he could go out and express himself. And one thing I like about him, he'll always tra- he's always his first thoughts always forward, mm. um, which is as a striker is is perfect, you know. And, He's another one which you, which you kind of build that relationship. We've done a few clips, Jack's done a few clips about the way that each other play and the way we can fit in with each other. And it's all about building them relationships, like I said, similar to the ones that we had last year. And how much confidence do you take from that performance against City last weekend where you came so close, desperately close to getting something off, off them? Definitely, yeah. You know, I think the boys can be proud of themselves. I think, you know, the shape and the the application and sticking, sticking to that formation and defensively how good we were was, was unbelievable and then even when they go one nil up to, to, to claw one back and at that point you know you, you, you fancy your chances and you know we, we, we make mistakes and like I said before we, those mistakes will kill you but it's definitely something that we can be proud on you know I don't think anyone came off that game of course we was this gutted with ourselves that we couldn't get anything from the game but everyone was proud of the proud of the performance and it's definitely something to build on from that um, going into a big game for us this weekend and hopefully can build on that and get the three points. And just how big is this game with Everton? I've heard some noise on the outside saying it's a must win already, which sounds ridiculous, what, four games into a Premier League season. But I guess people are looking at where you are and where they are and saying this, you know, this has to be the one where you get something from. Yeah, there's a lot of noise uh, all year round in football in there, wherever, whatever league, you know, there was noise last year and there's noise <laughs> this year. and It's one of them things, but... Um, it's a big game for us. We want to be ticking off. We want to be taking points off teams that are in and around us, of course, that goes without saying. So I guess from that point of view, you could look at it as a six point or whatever you want to call it. We just see it as a game that at home, we're, we always want to take points at home. A team that's not Man City. Um, so we always want to <laughs> try, and, uh, try and get three points off teams at home that aren't Man City. And speaking of noise, a lot's been said about the atmosphere against Man City. A lot of people who perhaps aren't familiar with Bramall Lane so much, people on the outside just commenting on how loud it was. How helpful can the crowd be? Yeah, it's the one thing I've always said, you know, when I've played against Sheffield United before, when I played for Sheffield United, I've, uh, this, the first season in the Premier in particular, I think we'd, we'd won games or got results at games at home before we'd even come because teams didn't want to come and play us against uh, at home. You know, I, I love it when it's freezing at Bramall Lane on a night and the fans are so loud and it intimidates the other teams and, you know, it gives us such a boost and, you know, people are surprised about how loud that, that that's how I remember, that's how I see Bramall Lane when you when you mention Bramall Lane to me, that noise and that level of enthusiasm and how behind us they are, I feel like that's in my head that's what Bramall Lane is and that's what we're about as a team and it just all collides together so well and I think that's why, especially in that first season in the Prem at home, we were such a hard team to to beat at home and that's what we need to get back to being this year. And just to get off the mark before the international break would be nice, wouldn't it? Otherwise, it, it can be a long fortnight. Definitely, I think if you look at the games, the boys are probably unlucky to not have maybe two points at the minimum. You know, the Forest game obviously conceding late and then again at City. Individual errors might have cost us in them two games, but like you say, going into that international break with points on the board would be a lot better than going in with, with, with zero points on the board. So that's what we're going to try and do. Good luck, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Tom Davis, you a fan? Yeah, he's so good, mate. Yeah, there you go, so good. Great kid as well. He's a great kid as well. So let's hear from him, shall we? Tom, Tom Davis, who's been speaking at the Media Day this week. I'm sure you had plenty of options, but what was the attraction of Sheffield United? 
Um, well, it's a massive club and the, they've got a great plan to, to compete in the Premier League, which was massively attractive to me. I met the manager and um, spoke to him about how he'd like me to play and what he'd like me to do for the team. And it was really appealing for me. Yeah. And of course, the Premier League's the, the biggest league in the world and that's where I want to be in competing in. What role has Paul Heckenbottom seen for you? Because we've seen you in various roles, wide, through the middle, an attacking midfielder, defensive midfielder. What are you going to play here? Uh, well, yeah, uh, my me, me first job is to get fit and get on the pitch and, and uh, be involved that way to show the team and him where I can do. But it's to be a box-to-box -box midfielder, really. Yeah. Um, it's where I've always been. I feel like I have and I was sort of changed into a different position. Uh, just with the personnel we brought in and I seem to fit the deeper role more, more than others in the team but that's never been my position really, I've always been a box-to-box -box midfielder so uh, speaking to the manager and seeing what the team need I think I can, I can really do that. Yeah. Jonathan, good start at Charlton last weekend, first of all a quick reflection on that. Yeah, I think we had, um, it was a very positive game and we were very pleased with the outcome. Um, obviously, Charlton were obviously the pre-match favourites and I think they're one of the title contenders of this season um, on paper. So, to go to the Valley and pick up a draw um, in the mannerism, the way we did it, was very pleasing. And obviously, when we came back in on the Tuesday and we looked over the, the, the stats and the actual game, it, it was really clear to see that we actually had the better of the, the match. But... Obviously, we just need to make sure we convert those chances into goals now, um, and that's what we look to do against Sunderland this weekend. There's been a huge turnover of players this summer. How difficult is it getting results whilst trying to gel players together all at the same time? It is difficult. I think um, the one thing I must admit that we've done very well is one of the things that have been really, we've been really big on is looking deeper into players with their stats. Um, to make sure they suit the style of play that I wanted to play this season. So that has a big impact on the fact that a lot of the stuff that I'm trying to implement comes natural to a lot of players. Um, on top of that as well, a lot of references. Um, I've been in, I've, I've had it a number of times where you've done a big turnover of the squad and you get bitten in the backside because you've not really checked out from a personality point of view. That can have a big negative impact on the actual group. Whereas this time we've made sure that everyone we've brought in sort of fit the ethos um, and the morals of what we want to do for this season and um, that's made it a lot simpler but that being said they've got to get to know each other they've got to get to understand how each other play on the pitch just the little little details that they need to understand from one another and we're still obviously in that phase now where we're getting there but there's still a little bit to go and this I guess is with a long-term plan in mind yes you want results now everybody yeah. does but I guess there has to be a, a longer term view doesn't there? 100%. We want to be sustainable first and foremost, and I think when we mean sustainable, sustainable as a setup, sustainable as a competitive team. So we're not just going to be a one-year wonder, or we're not just going to have like a, a good half a season and then a poor second half of the season. It's making sure that everything we put into place now is allow us allows us for the longevity of what we want to achieve. Um, naturally, that is to go and to be the top of the women's game. Um, obviously, however long that takes, we don't know, but. I think it's really important with, like I say, the player we recruited, the, the mindset of the staff and obviously with the backing and support of the club that we're able to build a department and a women's setup that actually we can see going somewhere in the, over the next five years and I think that we're on the right path from that point of view. What do you want the team style to be this season? Score as many goals as possible. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we're... I like to entertain and I say that to the girls from day one in our very first like, um, meeting, I said, look, whether you like to admit it or not, we are in, a, in an entertainment business and we need to make sure we get bums on seats. And one of the ways to do that is to make sure that the way that we play is an attacking, attractive style of football um, and to make sure it's exciting and as um, engaging as possible for the supporters to get involved with. And I think that's coming out and I think the, the, the fans sort of saw that towards the end of last season when they came in. It, obviously, I think the Charlton game was a real good advert of how we want to play as well from that point of view. Obviously, from, that, from a technical, tactical point of view, we're, we're very much a transitional-based team. We, if, you, if you come in, we'll hit you very quickly on the attack. Um, equally, we have the adaptability and the flexibility to be a possession-based team. Um, so it's making sure the girls can adapt to different scenarios, different formations, different shapes within 90 minutes and not just think that we're going to play one way for the whole game. I think that also allows you to keep the fans on, on the edge of the seats because it's something different. 
Um, but equally, I think if we get it right and we get the understandings and all the principles right, it becomes a, we become a very difficult team to understand and to analyse because teams will just see very different patterns mm. and shapes as they, they look at us. The World Cup this summer was, a, was an enormous success. Numbers up across the board, attendances, viewing figures, all of that, some great drama, great games. Do you think something like that can have an imp impact on the women's game here? I think so. I, I think, look, if I'm totally honest, I think so far it only majorly impacts the top four in the WSL. Um, and that's because obviously they've put a lot of investment in over the years and mm. they're reaping the benefits of the, the foresight of what they saw with the women's games to be. Um, I think what I am definitely seeing though is that both the championship and now the tiers three and four are getting a lot stronger. Um, there's a much bigger bottleneck of youngsters coming into the game, which means that they're filtering now into the championship tier three, tier four, rather than just being sort of on the books of tier one teams or WSL mm. teams. Um, and I think the World Cup has had a massive impact and the Euros has had a massive impact on that because what it has done, it shows young girls there's a true actual career to be made out of this now, whereas in the past there wasn't. And I think as long as everyone keeps seeing that foresight and keeps working together, because the women's game is different to the men's, so we've got to be a bit more of a community and support one another. I think the game will just keep growing from strength to strength to strength. And I think in five years time again, it'll be unrecognisable to what it is today. And, and I think we are in a much better place than we are today than we were five years ago. And how excited are you about the first home game? A lot of these girls will be playing at Bramall Lane for the first time because they're new faces. Yeah. Uh, there was a real appetite last season. The crowds were great. You're playing Sunderland this weekend. What can the fans expect that are coming down? I mean, look, first and foremost, I love being at Bramall Lane. It's, it's a fantastic um, venue. The stadium is, for me, is phenomenal. And when I first walked in there, I thought, I didn't expect it to be the way it was. It had such an aura and a, a feel to it straight away. Uh, we've had we've had a few we've had obviously good good turnout with fans and stuff. And when you get that noise in there, you really feel it. Yeah. Um, I think for this Sunday, again, like I said, I just want to entertain them because I want to make sure that their first game of the season ends positively. And positive doesn't necessarily just mean about the result. It means about the fact that that young girl that comes to watch the game and go, mum and dad, I want to see that again or she brings a brother along with us, then they bring a friend along with them, um, parents then come together and so on and so on. And the only way we're going to do that is by showing them good football, um, creative football um, and entertaining football, which is what we're, what we're doing. And I think that's one thing, like I say, we are getting known for and we just want to make sure we keep going down that route. And the target this season? What is it? It's a good one, that, you know, because <laughs> the, the, the winner inside me wants to say one thing. <laughs> I know what that probably is. Yeah, yeah. But look, we, I've said to, the, said to this, the players, I said, look, we need to be competitive. That's the first and foremost. Every game we're going to be competitive. We want to win as many games as possible. But first and foremost, we set our, ba our baseline, our benchmark of what we see as being a competitive team. We try and replicate that as much as possible. And I do feel that if we do that properly and efficiently, we'll have more happy days and sad days over the course of the year. And how that ends up, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> well, good luck. Good yeah. luck this weekend. Uh, if you, you can get down, please do. Sheffield United's women in action this weekend against Sunderland. Um, in a moment, we're going to hear from Sheffield United's latest signing, Luke Thomas. But before that, let's look back at how Jonathan's team got on last weekend and that opening fixture of the season at Charlton. Look, nil nil after 10 minutes here. Can Sheffield United summon an attack? That's a really, really good run. Some fantastic work by Isabel Goodwin. A raw talent. The pen are doing really well. Trying to push forwards for Charlton. She's covered by Ross, but Barker and Rain are doing really well to combine. And now it is the visitors who attack. There's acres of space for the ball to be cut back and it's beautifully placed for Hodgson. Charlton look to have passed the danger, although that is poor from Green. United attack again, Natasha Nadal plays it short and then we see another golden opportunity and an almost calamitous defensive error. Newsham. A nice ball, good win. Lays it off to her teammate. That's a fantastic strike and an equally fantastic save by Sean Rogers. Possession lost by Charlton. The shot comes in, and there's nothing that Rogers can do about that. 
What a sublime strike from Sheffield United. They have salvaged a point. You say United came in a couple of days ago, so this move appears to have gone very quickly for you. Yeah, it was. I had uh, interest elsewhere at the time, but um, then United came along and it was a, it was an easy decision, like I say. Um, a no-brainer, really. And uh, like I say, I can't wait to get started again. And a season long loan as well, so a real opportunity for you to re-establish yourself at this level again. Yeah, definitely. Um, playing Premier League football is what everyone's dream is, really. Um, so to be back, back doing that is uh, an exciting experience and hopefully we can get some results and get some points on that board. That's Sheffield United's latest recruit, Luke Thomas. Right, time to hear from the Sheffield United manager, Paul Heckingbottom, who's been speaking to the media ahead of this weekend's clash with Everton. Uh, Everton, of course, the, the next challenge. In these circumstances, with the points tallies as they are, who's kind of under more pressure to get the victory? Because Everton's problems, I suppose, are well documented, whereas Sheffield United are just hoping to get going. Uh, yeah, I honestly don't see it that way. Just we want to win. However, it was we were going to try and win the game. What's happening in other clubs is is irrelevant. I think uh, Everton's status as a club and the fact that they're the story at the minute. I think it overshadows, like I said, particularly those two games I've seen, where they should have won the games and it would have been a totally different story. Um, so we, our job's a little bit different. It's it's, it's not about a story. It's not about uh, a narrative, it's about what's in front of you, how do you win it and for us looking at Everton and, and what we see, we know it's going to be a tough game um, but it's one that we want to win and we're going to approach to try and win. And, and give us an idea as to how Sean, because we, we got to know week in week out almost forensically how Sean Dyches Burnley played, so Sean Dyches Everton, how, how do they go about their, their, their way? Yeah, lots of similarities and the, the demands that, that he puts on the players, uh, it's going to be interesting now with the new signing. Um, signings, but certainly one I think will play, um, and, and with one or two injuries, how that shifted the, the dynamic of the squad. My my opinion, what I've seen of them, and, and the way I think he'd go, I quite like. I don't think it's weakened them. You know, I, I think they'll be uh, still have threats in in those forward areas, uh, maybe more so than what they've had in in recent weeks. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting game. We know they're going to be a challenge. We know the work rate's going to be. First class, we know how organised they're going to be and how they're going to set up. Um, I think the, the, the little bit of unknown is, like I say, through the, the new players. Fingers crossed then for a big result for the Blades this weekend against Everton. That's as far as we go this week and we will be back in two weeks' time as we preview the trip to Tottenham. Join us then, if you can, on the SUTV show.